Hello, my name is Alejandro. This is another ISDC video. Today, we have a very, very special wreck that we're going to dive. We're going to dive the Thilstagorm in Egypt. The reason is twofold. Number one, you guys asked for it. And number two, the Thilstagorm is about to have its 79th sinking anniversary. So it's a pretty important date. Join me and let's go for a dive. Welcome back. Today we have a very special video prepared for you. This one is going to be a bit different than the videos you've seen before in the channel. This video will have three main sections. First section, we're going to dive the wreck as usual, this time on the outside, pointing out all the all of the interest points you may see there. Second section, we're going to dive into the cargo holds of the wreck and show you how the wreck looks like on the inside and what's interesting to see. And then there's special section number three, where we are gonna talk about the history of the wreck. The history of this wreck is very rich, very important. So we took some time for the ones that want to stay longer and uh, we're gonna talk about it. We're doing, gonna do some really interesting infographics. So without further ado, Let's go dive and remember to subscribe. Before we hit the water, here are some facts that are important for you to know about the wreck. This wreck lies nowadays in between 60 and 100 feet of depth, which makes it suitable for almost any uh, type of diver from advanced open water all the way to technical. And uh, it used to be a 415 foot long wreck with a width of 57 feet. This is a big wreck, an impressive wreck. Let's go to the water. The explosion made the two locomotives that were on board to be expelled from the ship and the shipwreck itself. So the two LMS Stainer class locomotives nowadays rest in the sun, one on the starboard side and one on the port side of the wreck. The locomotives were traveling together with two wagons each, coal and water tender. Those wagons are still on board on the deck of the Thilsterboom. You can find them both on port side and on the starboard side while diving towards the bow of the ship. towards the stern of the ship, we're gonna find what used to be cargo hold number four. Over there, we can see two Brent Carrier Mark II tanks that are upside down, a bunch of ammo, the propeller axle sticking out of the stern, and of course, the two guns. And remember, those two were the only two cannons that were the defenses of the Thilstable. When reaching holds number one and two, 
the capstans are still there and it's quite impressive to get a, a panoramic view from the top of them uh, where you can see the four wagons all the way up to the bow itself. At the bow, the highlights are the anchor winch. And of course, there's one of the anchors that is still there hanging from the bow of the wreck. And the other one is still placed in the sand, which was where it was located when the Thilstagorm was bobbed. So we showed you the outside of the wreck. Now it's time for us to get into the cargo holds. Thilstagorm had four cargo holds in total. Cargo hold four was destroyed on the blast of the bombs. Cargo, cargo hold three was full of coal, so it's not much of an interesting one. The two ones we are gonna be focusing on are cargo holds one and two. They're closer to the bow of the ship and they have a plethora of cargo still intact over there from motorcycles, jeeps, ammo, boots, you name it. So let's go and, and check them out. I will try to show you while we're diving the different pieces that you're seeing in the shooting. So, Thilsigorn was launched in April 1940 and it was built by Joseph Thompson and Sons 
uh, for the Albis line in Sutherland, United Kingdom. Although this cargo ship was privately held, World War II was at its peak. So the British government somewhat founded its construction and classified the vessel as an armored freighter. That implied that they installed at the stern of the ship a heavy machine gun and an anti-aircraft uh, gun. After its launch, Fistagorn had three successful trips, uh, one to the US to bring back steel and aircraft parts, a second one to Argentina to bring grain, and the third one to the West Indies to bring back rum. The fourth and final trip of the Thilstagorm was supposed to be to Alexandria in Egypt, and here's what happened. First of all, let's explain why the Thilstagorm didn't go through the Mediterranean Sea in order to get to Alexandria. With World War II at its peak and General uh, Rommel in the northern part of Africa bringing havoc over the British uh, army, um, it was not safe for the ship to go through the Mediterranean. So they made the decision to go through South Africa, made a tactical stop in Cape Town, uh, tag along with the HMS Carlisle, and then get to Alexandria through the Suez Canal. Thilsigorm departed Glasgow in Scotland on June the 2nd, 1941. Departed to uh, Cape Town, as we said. The cargo was mainly for the 8th Army that was forming up in Egypt. Uh, 8th Army was formed basically of uh, UK soldiers and soldiers from all over the, the Commonwealth, such as uh, Australia, New Zealand, India, and, and the other colonies. So the ship arrived in Cape Town, South Africa, where she refueled and uh, resupplied. At Cape Town, the HMS Carlisle tag along on its way up north uh, to the Suez Canal. When both ships arrived to the Suez Canal, there had, there had been a collision of some sort and the canal was blocked. So they were forced to moor uh, right there and wait for the blocking to be released. That happened in September 1941. And that mooring was the last mooring of the Filsegor because it just stayed there until October the 6th when it was bombed and sunk. The Germans have a very specific interest in the Suez Canal given its, its strategic importance due to logistics. The German intelligence had some information of an Allied troop buildup around the canal to do a, a counteroffense in the Africa front. So that's why they uh, had information about ships bringing in troops. At that point, they dispatched two Heinkel HE-111 aircrafts to bomb uh, one of those troop ships. The, they searched for a while. They couldn't find any troop ship but they found the Thilsegor. When they found it, they targeted and deployed two bombs of 2.5 tons each that stroke directly on cargo hold four. Uh, at that point of time, the, um, between that explosion and helped by uh, some ammo that exploded on board of the ship, sinking was inevitable. Um, loss of life entailed four sailors and five members of the Royal Navy. The rest of the crew was uh, rescued by the HMS Carlisle. Well, we made it to the end. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a like and leave us your comments. We really like those. Also, remember to subscribe. So this is it. We'll see each other next time, hopefully soon. Thank you very much for watching.